Hey guys, welcome. Today I'm gonna to be doing an unboxing with you. So about seven weeks ago, I had some plants come in, imported plants from Indonesia, from Green Spaces ID. They have beautiful plants, really good prices. I've ordered from them before. I've worked with them in collaborations before. This is a collaboration, so I wanna do the unboxing and then also walk you through the process of rehabbing them and getting them to put out new roots and new growth as fast as possible. A couple of quick tips about importing plants also is it is really easy because most of the companies take care of all the phytosanitary for you, like Green Spaces takes care of all, all the details on their side. So all you have to do is basically pay the incoming customs fee, which is $25 for most states now. They didn't used to charge this fee, but now customs does. So basically, uh, whoever your shipper, your shipping carrier is, like for me, it's DHL. So DHL covers that fee with customs, so they deal with all of that. And then they just send you or text you the, the notice of a bill, and you just jump on your phone or on the computer, pay it super easy, $25, and you're done. And two, the State Department of Agriculture does require us to have plant import permits now, no matter how many plants we're ordering. So it used to be where you could order up to a dozen dozen plants and you didn't have to have a permit. Um, only if you ordered more than a dozen plants would you need a permit. But now they require everyone to have a plant import permit. But the good news is it's really easy to get your plant import permit. It's just a form that you fill out online. It took me like maybe 15 minutes to fill that out and then I got my import permit within like five or 10 minutes. It was really fast and easy. And the permit lasts three years. And one tip I have for that is if you are filling that out, when you get to the part about what countries you're importing from, just list any countries you think you might be ordering from within the next three years. Uh, don't just put the, the one country and <laughs> put like multiple countries you think you might order from. And then also list any genus, any plant genuses you think you might want to get, not just what's in this one order. So that way your permit is good and covers you for any purchases you think you might be making, even if you don't make that <laughs> purchase. So it's just easier that way you don't have to go in and like, you know, then add another country or add more plants, but you can always do that too. Um, but just wanted to share those tips with you in case you want to get your plant import permit. And I have a 20% off coupon if you want to order from Green Spaces. So I will have that link below. It's Christine 20. I believe that gives you 20% off a $150 purchase or more. One more thing I want to mention about plant mail, receiving plant mail and getting plants to have the best possible chance of survival is avoiding ordering plants during extreme temperatures. So either the, the peak hot season of summer or the extreme extreme cold of winter. So I try to avoid the extreme temperatures. So ordering like right now is an excellent time. So ordering during fall or springtime, perfect. That's like the ideal when weather is very temperate and you're not experiencing those extreme temperatures. So just want to mention that normally I don't order plants where they would come during July, but what you're going to see was from seven weeks ago and we were in our peak hot season. It was kind of an accident that uh, our collaboration sort of ended up <laughs> where the plants came at that time. But with that said, you are going to be seeing some very heat stressed plants. Just know that ahead of time in this unboxing. All right, let's get to it. I knew it was gonna be coming in today between one and three and I've been checking my phone constantly since and then all of a sudden it was just out there in an area where I couldn't see and then I realized oh my gosh how long has this been sitting out here because I didn't hear them come up or anything I didn't see them I, I'm very scared for these plants okay the box is open I have not seen what we might be <laughs> uncovering here uh, oh oh boy oh boy I see fully yellow leaves all right oh okay so here we go all right this first one is syngonium scrambled eggs and it did lose a yellow leaf oh wait there it is it's still hanging on there <laughs> but this is the the variegated winlandii this is anthurium green mamba this is a beautiful anthurium i have not got to see this one look at that oh my gosh that's beautiful i love anthurium so much oh i really hope this one makes it Okay, hang on one sec. I'm gonna go grab a jar of water and start putting these in. So hang on one moment. How are the roots? Everything's dry, but you know what? We'll just see what happens. This is a philodendron tortum. I've always wanted one of these, and for some reason I just never got to get one yet. I can't believe I finally have a tortum. This has been one of my wishlist plants. Okay, I'm actually gonna pull some of that moss off there because I need to see what's happening. We have some dark roots. I don't know if those made it, but you know what? Even if we lose roots, that's okay. It does have other nodes that we can root from. Oh, shoot. Oh, 
Oh boy, that one had a hard time. So there is some struggle. Oh, there went one of the leaves. Oh my gosh. All right, let's see what we have to work with here. Okay, yes, I see some desiccated roots. Let's get that moss out of there. The moss is pretty much dry. It looks like we might have a chance with uh, reviving the bigger roots. Uh, I am going to pull off this that other leaf though. We're gonna, we're gonna get rid of that. I'm just gonna pull off those little bottom roots because those are definitely completely dried out. It's so hard with thin leaves or thin stems because they're, they're just not able to hold enough moisture for the plant to survive the trip. But you know what? Sometimes you gotta take the risk. Okay, this is Raphidophora foraminifera and they sent the variegated one. Okay, so there it is. There's a little baby. It has some old dried leaves down here. Oh, uh, let's see here. Do we have anything to work with? Oh, I think all those roots didn't make it. Okay, can you see those roots? Yeah, they are all totally soft. Like there's no life left. Such a bummer. Well, shoot. Let's clean off those old leaves too because we don't need to keep those on. That's gonna be a tough one, but I'm hoping right here, I'm hoping I can get some root out of that last node there. We're gonna give it a shot. Oh, oh, this is very exciting. Okay, this is Philodendron mayoi. Okay, let's see what's happening with these roots. Okay, so do we have some that are still okay? It does appear that we do have some that still look alive and healthy. Okay, just doing a super quick cleanup on some of those fine roots that didn't make it. I'm just pulling those off. So that's what we're left with. Okay, that's the tallest vase I actually had for the Mayo Eye, so it's like a, a really wide <laughs> but skinny vase, but that'll be fine for now. Okay, so this next one is a Florida Beauty. I have never had one of these. Let's see what the roots are doing. Oh, oh wow, those look decent. Only the little roots dried up on it, but the other roots look decent. Look at that, they're still white. Okay, I'm gonna leave these in water to rehydrate overnight, and I'm gonna put them on my Vistro shelves, the Ikea shelves in our office. And it's right in front of our big office window, so they'll get bright indirect light, but no direct sunlight coming in on the jars or anything. And I'll check in with you tomorrow morning, and we'll see if they melted or if they're still looking okay. Now this is how I rehab my import plants. What I'll do is I'll soak them in water and let them rehydrate as soon as I get them out of the box for 24 to 48 hours in just plain water. There's nothing added to the water. So once they've soaked overnight, I check them that first morning and just see what's going on with them, see how the roots look, and see if there's anything that needs urgent care. So what I'll do is check the roots and if I see like some browning tips, you know, so we've got some root rot, looks like the, the tips didn't make it. So what I'll do is start trimming them. So I'll just feel for any of the dark spots, trim those until I get to the white clean root. Let's see, sometimes you can just peel it away, peel away any of the root rot. So the tortum and the anthurium, even though they both have some roots that could be viable, I'm gonna treat them like propagations. So what I'll do is do a hydrogen peroxide soak after trimming off that root rot. And then just add a splash of hydrogen peroxide into their water. I'm gonna let that soak after having trimmed them. Let's do that with the anthurium. Before I start cutting on another plant, I always make sure to sterilize or disinfect my shears with some alcohol. See that tip doesn't look great, so I'm gonna trim that off. I'm gonna have to trim this one too. And I just check the stem out, making sure that there's no rot in the stem or anything. Looks okay. Add a little hydrogen peroxide. So I'll just let those soak in the hydrogen peroxide solution for about 15 to 20 minutes. All right, now that the plants have had a chance to soak, I'm gonna take them out of the hydrogen peroxide. So what I'm gonna do is try putting this in perlite and see how these roots do. I'd like to preserve them if possible. So I already washed this jar and I'm just gonna scoop in some perlite. Let's try that, let's get these roots in there. So yeah, I'd really like to see if we can save these roots. It'll be interesting to see what happens with this tortum. I'm really not sure how the roots are gonna go. They could go either way. But then up here, we do have a nice fresh node. So I'd be rooting on this node and you can see a little root bump right there. And then there's a growing eye right there. 
So I think I'm gonna just bring the perlite all the way up to that. All right, we're just gonna try this and hope for the best. So Anthurium Green Mamba and Philodendron Tortum, I'm gonna go put on my shelf under the grow light and I'm gonna check out the other plants and see what we can do with those. You guys, this Amedrium Zipelianum is so beautiful. I love this. I can't believe how dark green the leaves are. And it's almost like they're embossed or something. It's like the, it's almost like they've been stitched down the leaves, the veining. Oh, it's so gorgeous. Now I'm looking at the situation here. Let me, let me just show you what we're working with. So we've got the new plant here coming out from right there. And then this is the old leaf. And so you can see all the places it's been cut and where it was propagated. And then this vine is coming off of the old plant. So it was like one long kind of kinky vine. All right, let's remove the new plant, this part from where it was propagated and the vine it originally grew from. So there's the old part. And then we have the new little plant here. So there's the cut in. I'm just gonna wrap the root in a damp paper towel and let that callus over for like maybe 30 minutes or so and then I'll check on it and I'll probably just put it right back in water. All right, so there we go. I just spray a little water on a paper towel and wrap that damp paper towel around the roots while that cut is callusing over. Okay, let's do some chop and prop. I love propagating. This is also how I end up with way too many plants, especially duplicates, but I love propagating. I'm gonna chop right there because I got a growth point right there. All right, I'm gonna chop off the top of that. There's a growing eye right there. I'm gonna save those roots and see if we can get those to do anything. All right, here we go. Wet sticks and one with an old leaf on it. Let's see, let's do the two with the growing eyes in here. Actually, I'm just gonna pop all of these into here. All right, that's got its wet sticks. And then this one will get its own cup. This is gonna go in there, so the stick is gonna go in there horizontal. There's a tag for the Medrium Zipelianum, and let's get this one and see how it's doing. So this one I'm not gonna put in perlite because I really wanna see where any growth is happening. I wanna see exactly what's going on. So I'm just gonna propagate it in water. So I just keep a little bit of water in the bottom of the cup for a reservoir. This is not looking good, you guys. This is the Raphidophora fora minifera variegated. I let it rehydrate overnight in water, but then I took it out and put it in perlite because I was nervous about the water and rapid forest. So let's see what's happening here in the perlite. Oh no. Oh, that's not good. Okay. We have rot. Yeah. So that didn't make it shoot. All right. Growth point for that plant is gone. It's all rotted here. I can see where the propagation cut was made, you know, the original stem for the propagation and then the new plant coming out of it. But I'm gonna see if I cut off where that new plant rotted. I wonder if there's any more chance. See, that is green in there. I just wonder if there's any more chance for that to do anything. We'll try this again. Get some perlite in here. Put the little wet stick in there. Poor little thing. So even though I have my wet sticks in individual cups, I still put them in my perlite prop box. I love these skinny glass jars for water propagation. So I actually just switched the Amedrium into this one because it fits better. Like sometimes the wide mouth jars or vases are just too wide <laughs> for some of the plants and they end up, you know, floating up or flip flopping all over the place. So I love these skinny jars for water propagation. All right, the Florida Beauty. Let me just check these roots. That one looks a bit dark. Let's see. Yep. Okay, that's good. Okay, I'll give that a shot. I can keep an eye on some of the older roots here and see if those start to do anything or if they start to die off, then I know to pull it out, do some more root trimming and then pop it back in or put it in a jar of water. And here's the Syngonium winlandii variegated, or wait, what is it called? Scrambled eggs, that's what it is. And I feel pretty comfortable with Syngonium and propagating them directly in my aeroid mix, so I just did that. And the roots were already pretty good to start with, so I think it'll do fine in here. 
and I'll just watch for new growth and see how it does. It does have a new leaf coming out right here, so that'll be what I pay attention to to see how it's doing in the pot. Okay, the philodendron mayoi, it's pretty leggy. It starts higher up with the leaves, and I would like to chop this. I think I'll do it in three pieces. So I'll take out that inner node and that inner node. I think we'll try that. I'll chop it about an inch and a half above the node to get in there. And then this one is gonna stay exactly like that, except, except I do want to shorten that a little bit. I'll just take off a couple, couple inches of that inner node that we don't need there. So on a cut in like this, sometimes I'll dip the tip in cinnamon before I put it in soil. But usually even before I do that, what I like to do is take a wet paper towel. So I'll just wet the paper towel, wrap the roots in the paper towel, and I just leave that cut in in the open air and just let that dry a little bit. And on this second piece, I just need to leave the top exposed and I can wrap all the rest of it. So there we go. Just leave it just like that with a little fresh cut tip exposed. Okay, I'm gonna leave those for about 15, 20 minutes and I'll be back and we'll pot them up. I'm gonna pot them together into one pot. Okay, they look like they've dried pretty well, but I'm still gonna use a little bit of cinnamon. All right, so I'm just gonna dip the tip onto the cinnamon. I'm gonna use a bamboo pole as a temporary support. Okay, let's start unwrapping these babies and get them in here. Okay, now this one, this is a little one. I do plan on putting these on a moss pole as soon as possible, but I'm gonna let them rehab first, and then as soon as they look like they've recovered, I will get them onto a moss pole. This leaf is like hanging on by literally a thread, and I'm still not gonna take it off. I'm gonna let that dry up on its own. Here, let's attach that one right about there. Okay, time to check in on the propagations. It's now three weeks later, and let's see how everybody is doing. So the Syngonium, I'm curious if that one is putting out roots that are making it to the edge of the pot yet. I don't think I see anything. I was all looking at the sides of the pot, looking for signs of roots, and uh, as it turns out, they're on the bottom. I'm glad to see that these are, as usual, vigorous growers, Syngonium. And this one also has already put out this new leaf here, which is so dark and beautiful. And then it's working on this leaf right here. So it's just now unfurling. And it only lost one leaf. I left that on there so I could report to you guys and <laughs> let you know I did lose one leaf. All right, so that's the Syngonium, putting out new leaves, new roots, and seeming to be growing very vigorously already. And then the other plant that I potted up already is the Philodendron Mayoi. Let's check in on that. Ooh, look at that, look at that. We've got, we've got new growth. Look at that, it still has all its leaves, even that one that is still dangling there. Can you even believe that that piece is still hanging on for dear life? and that leaf that is has been trying to yellow since it got here it's like still hanging on so this is another really tough plant and then there's new growth from both of those stems that i chopped and propped so nice to see the new growth points happening waiting still waiting to see some growth from the the center main one let's see what's happening with the roots yep new root growth right there I see some of the original roots that it came in on. Oh yeah, it does look like there's some new roots there too. So that's the update on the Philodendron Mayoi. Doing good, seems like it's another really vigorous grower. Okay, let's check out the Philodendron Florida Beauty. This one ended up losing a couple of leaves, but I'm pretty sure that was my fault because I think I added a little too much water to the perlite and it just got a little waterlogged and I noticed those leaves yellowing suddenly and that's usually what happens when, when that's going on. But it did put out a brand new leaf, this one right here. Very pretty and it has new roots. Yeah, that one is definitely ready to get potted up. And then the Amedrium zapilianum, it grew some new roots. And it also has two growth points that are, well, one is growing underwater or trying to, and the other one, oh my gosh, yes. Okay, it's probably hard to see, but the other one is right up there. All right, definitely time to get out of water. Yeah, we gotta get that on a moss pole straight away. And Therium green mamba, it did end up losing one leaf, the, the leaf that was yellowing but it looks like it's trying to put out another leaf there. Look at those beautiful, fuzzy, peachy roots. Oh, look at that one's like sun, sunrise colored. That is gorgeous. Wow, this thing has beautiful roots. Uh, I'm not sure what's happening there. It looks like maybe the old root, perhaps there's some rot. We, we better check that out. We might need to trim that 
but yeah, the other roots, the fresh ones, look awesome. So out of five of the wet stick Amedrium zipelianums, only one didn't seem to take. And this one is clearly the most vigorous one. And that one's got a growth point right there. Oh, Raphidophora, Fora manifera variegata. Poor thing, looks like it completely rotted sitting on top of the perlite. But you know what, the stem, it was just, it, I felt like it was just too small for me to be able to get a shot at growing it. But now that I know that uh, it apparently did not like being put in the water and then it really did not appreciate the perlite either. I don't know if it was just like too damp or if it was already upset from the water. If I have the opportunity to get another Raphidophora, uh, Phora manifera, or well, any kind of Raphidophora, if I was trying to propagate it, or if I just had a wet stick of it, I would try it in sphagnum moss. And then Philodendron tortum. Look at the new leaf. It was able to unfurl that. That was that brand new leaf that was all curled up. So that was pretty exciting to see that filling out. And I have no idea if there are any roots in here or not. Oh my gosh, there's a root. A brand new pink root. I've been checking for roots and I didn't see anything happening. That's the very first tiny pink root that I have seen. And then there's the old roots and those don't look too good. So I think I'm gonna get this out and see what's going on. This thing is gorgeous. You guys didn't tell me how beautiful the leaves were. I've never seen one in person before until now. I wanna show you guys the root system too, even though it is quite dainty, but we were left with these two little roots here that had to be trimmed. And I didn't even know if those were still gonna be viable or not, but look how much they were able to branch out. I tried the smaller pot, but it was just too tight with the moss pole in that. So normally when I start the moss poles, it's in this size pot. I know it's crazy to put a tiny root system into a pot of this size, but I'm gonna try to get it into the moss pole and rooting as soon as possible. It's a vigorous plant. Hopefully it'll just grow into the moss pole without any problem. That one's standing upright on its own already. I'm just gonna attach this taller one here. So that way the node is pressed up against the moss pole. I'm gonna put the grid over my sink and each plant I pot up, I'm gonna set over there and water it right away. And then we'll do an update afterwards. So, okay, let's move on to the next plant. All right, let's get the Florida Beauty out of its jar. Oh, there we go. It put out a good root system. Everything looks pretty good. Even back here, that was a root that I had to trim, but even that branched out really nicely. So the tip is dried, but the rest of the branching looks really good and healthy. If you guys grow any of these plants, let me know how they grow for you. And if there's any quirks that I need to know about <laughs> with any of them. So I'm gonna let it fill out this pot more with roots and then I'll upgrade the size as soon as it's ready to get a little bigger. And then by that time, it should be ready to pop it onto a moss pole, but I want it to grow a little bit more before that. I wanna check on the tortum. I can't wait any longer. I need to know what's happening in here. Uh, it doesn't look exciting, but it does have some new roots. Now what's happening here? Yeah, okay. Oh, I see there was a break in that root. That's why I couldn't do anything. So I just did a little root pruning and just pinched off some of the ends that didn't look like they were viable anymore. Most of the new root growth is all happening from a couple of main roots on this side. So I'm at least glad to see that. That was viable. And let's check the stem right here. No, it's still firm. Yeah, I don't see any stem rot or anything. Let's see, and that leaf is still hanging on. Yeah. So hopefully you can see, this is the old stem here. That's the old original plant. That's what was propagated. And the new plant came out of there. So you can see that's where all the fresh roots are coming from, from the, the new plant. So that's exactly where you would expect your new roots to come from. Okay, I'm gonna go with another four inch pot. I think that would be safest because I just don't want to overwater it. Yeah, I'm just gonna root it out more because that the root system is very fragile. I do not want to mess that up. I think I'm going to put some sphagnum moss on top of this too and see if I can get that top node to start rooting out. Okay, so there's that top node and the newest leaf is right there. So I'm just going to have that sphagnum moss light and fluffy and lightly moist around that top node and hopefully I can get that root system to start going up higher because I need more roots on this thing, poor, poor little baby. So I'll just keep that moss moist and hopefully we'll be able to get that top node to start rooting. Anthurium green mamba, let's check this one out. Oh my gosh, it's actually stuck to the side of the jar. Like I'm trying to pull on it and it's, oh my gosh. Oh, there we go, okay. Just checking the health of the roots. Let's see that tip. We can prune that off because that was a little bit of softness on the tip, but the rest of it looks like it's okay. It's firm. So the stem looks good. This is firm. There's no rot there, even though it's dark. Everything looks good. 
new roots branched out of this fat root here. And then this root here is just totally brand new. So that didn't branch out from anything. And there's another brand new root one to come out right there. So I'll make sure when I pot it that that is covered or have moss around it so that can continue growing out. I thought I was gonna use a vintage orchid pot, but I decided I'm gonna go with the taller pot. Oops, that was quite a chunk. Don't need that big chunk. All right guys, time for an update on the plants and it is the seven week update and I'll just pull back here and show you where they've been growing right in front of our northeast facing window here. And they do get a lot of bright indirect light all day long in front of this window. So here's some of the growth updates we have. Let's start with the philodendron myoi, or wait, mayoi. I always get that backwards. Philodendron mayoi. That one has three cuttings in the pot and all three of the cuttings have put out new growth now. So the side cuttings have put out new leaves. There's a baby leaf back there. The top cutting didn't do anything for a while, but finally it has its new leaf that is just starting to unfurl. So that was pretty exciting to see because that top cutting really didn't have any roots at all. It had to basically start fresh uh, growing new roots before it could get to growing a new leaf. But I was pretty excited to see that new growth point starting to unfurl into a new leaf. It's also really cute to see when they're baby leaves without any <laughs> any sort of pinnateness going on. That's kind of cool to see that, the, how the leaves can transition. Philodendron Florida Beauty, that was the first leaf that it put out and then it's working on its second leaf in there right now. So that is very exciting to see some new growth on that plant. It has a small root system, but it looks like the roots are doing good. Everything looks healthy. I love these clear pots so you can see what's going on. Oh, I forgot to show you the mayo eye here. Let's take a look at the roots. So, you know, this one barely had any roots, but now it is doing really good. Philodendron tortum. This is another one I'm pretty excited to have because it has such an unusual growth pattern and it does have a new growth point there or well, its growth point has gotten bigger. So I guess it's working on a leaf in there. That tiny little curled part, I don't know. Do you guys grow the tortum? Is that normal that the growth point is curled too? I don't know, it's very unusual. Anyway, I, I don't really know much about this plant. It does have some very pretty pink roots forming in there. So it looks like all is going well with that. In the last update, the Syngonium scrambled eggs was working on this leaf. It was still furled up, but there it is. It put out a beautiful leaf. Well, if you, I mean, if you like that kind of variegated look. And then also it put out this brand new leaf back here, which it's just finishing unfurling there. Roots have been growing pretty vigorously right out the bottom of the pot. So, hmm, I guess I'm gonna have to repot it. That seemed like a pretty much an oversized pot already as is for the plant, but dang, those roots are just crazy. <laughs> They're just not stopping. When this Anthurium green mamba came in, it had one yellow leaf that came off and then it put out a brand new leaf here. Look, look how lovely that is. And it's, it's much bigger than the last one. <laughs> it's really beautiful. If I'm remembering correctly, I think green mamba is a cross between Anthurium papilliminum and Anthurium magnificum if I'm not mistaken, but it sure does make a beautiful combination. I love that leaf and that veining. Ooh, the leaf shape, everything about this plant, I love it. Beautiful roots too, it's really doing good. It's got some nice chunky roots going down to the bottom. Yeah, this plant has been just a joy to grow so far. And it's working on a new leaf right there. And this is probably one of my favorite new plants, the Amedrium zipelianum. It has put out new leaves back here. Look at those. <laughs> Look how cute those little leaves are with their few little pinnate, uh, little pinnate leaflets. So adorable. And they are working on new growth tips here. So there's two growth tips, the one higher up there and then one down there towards the soil. And the baby Zipelianum. So I potted these on 728, so July 28th. And it was working on that first leaf there with a little split last in the last update. But now I just put out the leaf and I put out that one and it has this new growth on the other cutting there. So three of the new growths are growing. And then I do see the new growth turn green on this other one. So it looks like it will be working on that one too. 
it might just take a little bit more time with that one. And I bet if I would have had a bigger container and left it in a perlite prop box for a while with higher humidity, those probably would be bigger and would have taken off even faster. Since I am in the desert, these are growing in a fairly dry environment because I'm not doing anything extra for the humidity. So I'm growing in my chunky aeroid mix. And with that chunky soil, my main goal with watering is just to keep it moist and not let them dry out. I just give them more frequent waterings, but a, a lesser amount of water each time. So that way it's almost like they're just getting a drizzle of rain, but pretty frequently. And that seems to do pretty well with their growth. It keeps them comfortable as if they, they know to expect that they're going to get their, their bit of rain every few days. All right guys, so that is the seven week update on the plants and how everybody's doing and their new growth. Also, I'll link Green Space's ID below. Definitely check them out. And you can always use my coupon, Christine, 20 for 20% off your order of $150. They have gorgeous plants and really good prices. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite plant is. If you have one or a favorite genus, what are you really enjoying growing right now? Let me know. All right, guys, I love you. Take care and I will see you in the next video, which I have some, some home videos coming up. It's a little, it's a little bit different, but not really for my channel, I guess, because I, I started this a long time ago. It has to do with something I started like over 10 years ago. Yeah, actually 11 years ago. All right, guys, take care. Thank you so much for watching. I love you, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.